and it's an interesting and uh, exciting opportunity for us to 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 see uh, how uh, well uh, how useful our tools are uh, to know uh, how well there's some feedback from from people. Um, so uh, first, I will uh, o briefly overview um, how the algorithm works. Just general, very general overview. Then I pass it to to Charles, and then Charles will will uh, tell us a detail of how to use the lizard website. Okay, so, um, all right, so, I, so I, I'll tell you uh, how protein docking works and particularly how our method works. Um, this is a lizard is protein protein docking software where you put two protein structures as input. So input of protein protein docking is is uh, two PDB file basically. And then what it does is, um, oh, it's, it's, it's really simple. So uh, then the algorithm will generate lots of different docking conformations and sampling the, sampling the, you know, every possible docking interface and then also angles, as long as uh, the interactions are, uh, seems to be feasible. And this step will generate uh, typically hundreds thousand of structures. Now, um, then uh, the second step is, is to, uh, to rank them. So before ranking the 100,000 models, uh, the, the process will do the clustering to reduce um, number of structures. So clustering will, will, will uh, well, identify very similar solutions and uh, uh, out of, or, or out of the, the similar solution, pick up just one representative structures. This will typically reduce to uh, reduce the, the docking models to uh, well, few, uh, few thousand structures. And then those structures are scored. Um, and so uh, as simple as that. Now, uh, uh, well, there was some, uh, some well, strengths and weakness of, of, the, of the methods. Um, I, I will, I will uh, summarize it later. Now this is uh, pairwise protein-protein docking where you input two protein structures and our lizard web server can also handle uh, more than two chains up to, I think, six chains. Um, so that is called uh, uh, multi-lizard. And so uh, first I show you how the lizard works. Now uh, lizard considers um, in, the, in the first stage of the, of the, of the uh, generating lots of models, lizard considers a couple of uh, geometrical uh, features to, to select uh, docking models. So um, given two protein structures here, I, uh, you see uh, on the left and there's one structure and there's another structure. Now, um, the, in, the, in the first stage, it considers, I think one, two, three, four different uh, geometrical features. First one is, is um, okay, so this is called, the, uh, the first one is a local, local surface shape. Um, what Lizard does is it first, uh, well, generate the surface of the protein from PDB file, and then spread the, the representative points on the surface and from each of the point, um, two things are computed. One is a normal vector, uh, which tells you the direction of the surface. And another one is the um, mathematical moment-based uh, descriptor of local surface shape, uh, which is called 3D Zernke descriptors. 3D Zernke descriptors will capture the, how the you know, local landscape look like within the, within the sphere size of six on shown. Uh, this is second one. And then third one is uh, simply um, interface area. So uh, Lizard will try to, to, uh, to try to identify the, the poses, docking poses, which have large interface area. And it also considers, then last one is atom clashes. If there are a significant number of clashes, then such uh, those uh, models will be rejected. Um, so what Lizard does is basically tries to, to generate lots of models and for each of the models, docking models, considers if uh, local surface is pointing each other like 180 degrees 
and also the, the local curvature, local surface uh, landscape are fitting nicely to with each other or not. And then consider interface and then uh, penalize atom clashes. Um, if you have any question, just, just uh, please ask. Um, protein surface is represented by uh, Gaussian, um, simply Gaussian distribution around the each atom. Xi I is uh, the, the each atom on the, on the protein. And uh, uh, so uh, it is, uh, so this, this equation is saying that each for, from each atom, Gaussian three, three dimensional Gaussian distribution is generated and uh, surface is generated by, by the sum of this uh, Gaussian distribution. Now, this is a bit about 3D Zenke invariance. This is how this uh, local surface is represented. Um, so uh, uh, 3D Zenke invariance is, is um, mathematical series expansion of, of, of three-dimensional uh, three surface. So, um, so the surface is cut by the, by the sphere of six Armstrong radius. And then the, sur uh, the, the surface region is represented by, is considered as here in this equation, this fx, this is a three-dimensional um, uh, surface shape projected onto uh, to a um, voxel grid. And um, then a 3D Zelenke invariance has uh, well, moments. Uh, the Zelenke Kantirakis uh, the, the, uh, basis have two terms. One is a spherical harmonics, which tells you the, the uh, direction, theta and phi. Then there's another radio function. Um, but the, uh, the essence is that the, the uh, surface region is, is represented by, by uh, you know, some of the series function, uh, the terms um, based on this, uh, the, the, the base function. And the nice thing about this Zenke invariant is that the shape information can be represented in rotation invariant way. So the, um, the, well, the, by, the, by the rotation of the, of the protein structures, this representation doesn't change. Um, so that's where uh, the lizard, lizard stands for local Zelenke descriptor-based docking methods. And the Z comes from this uh, Zelenke invariance. Okay, so uh, now after, the, uh, after uh, structures are generated and clustered, and then at the end, um, the models will be ranked by a scoring function. Now for scoring function, you know, though the models are already uh, ranked, uh, have a score of uh, those uh, geometry based score, but uh, at the end we use a combination of uh, three statistical potentials. Um, well, here, the st what statistical potential means is that, that this is, uh, this is uh, okay, the, the statistical potential is, is based on statistics of you know, atom distribution, geometrical distribution of in, in uh, known structures in PDD. So uh, uh, basically D phi, well, those are the, we use three scoring functions. Um, um, well, there was some, some detailed differences, but basic idea is basically the same. Uh, what those sc scoring function considers is if, uh, is the distance between um, atoms and also the uh, of 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 uh, different types of atoms of from from different types of of uh, amino acid residues, and GOP also considers some angles, and IT score is actually uh, using that well mathematically optimizing the scoring functions. Um, but what all these three method is doing is, um, if well it it will compute the 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 uh, the energy value based on the agreement of atom position distribution uh, that are observed from PDD. And so these scoring functions are not by, uh, developed by us. Uh, these are developed by uh, people working in uh, protein structure prediction or protein docking predictions. And what we, we, we do, uh, what we do is, um, the, we, we rank the, all of the docking models 
first independently, in, uh, independently by the three methods, BFIRE, GOP, and IT score, and then rank the, the models based on the each, each method first, for, and then uh, add up the ranks. So for example, if a model is ranked by ninth by DFIRE, and if GOP prefers it uh, be, uh, more, and then suppose that model is ranked as second, second choice by GOP, and if IT score ranked it as 24th, the rank sum gives is simply just sum of the ranks, nine plus two plus 24, um, which is 35. So uh, by adding those three, uh, three ranks, I want, well, we are uh, intention is that to, to see uh, consistency of uh, rankings by the three methods. And okay, so that's it about, uh, about the uh, lizard. So uh, input is two structures, generate models, clustering, scoring, and then models are ranked by the, by the score, rank sum score. Now, okay, so now this is about multi-lizard. Multi-lizard can handle docking of up to six chains. Um, basic idea is now, okay, so you input um, the older chain, older structures, five or six chains, up to five or six chains. And then at the initial stage, multi-lizard will dock, uh, run lizard, the previous pairwise docking methods for every pair of chains, A, B, A, C, um, A, D, and B, C, D, D, and so on. And then stores the, the candidates of pairwise docking models. Uh, these are clustered. Um, then in the next stage, idea is that to, to, uh, to combine those pairwise models together to build the full chain model. Um, this is, uh, this is uh, performed, this computation assembly is performed iteratively, try to, to improve step by step. Um, this is uh, the algorithm is, is, uh, is, is called the genetic algorithm. This, is, this tries to, to combine that, uh, you know, the uh, pairwise solutions and then uh, generate, generate in this in our in our methods about 200 models and then actually 400 models in, in one generation and then choose the 200 best ones and then uh, from from there uh, in, it started to, to to again in the next iteration it started to 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 to, to switch the the pairwise decodes again to to uh, to try to improve the population. Um, then, then uh, after, after, well, I think up to a couple of thousand iterations, um, uh, finally it outputs about 200 models after clustering. So for example, uh, this is two, two examples. X-axis is the, the generation, the iteration of, of the genetic algorithm. Y-axis is RMSD. In this particular well, uh, PDB, uh, the, the structures, um, RMSD started from about 30 Youngstrom. It's, and then um, during the iteration, at some point, well, uh, the genetic algorithm, algorithm found a good solution and that drastically re uh, reduced RMSD value. And then that was kept until, until end of the iterations. Same story here. Um, uh, well, this crossover, no crossover. So, so this is, I, I took this from, from one, uh, one figure from, from, our, from our paper. This is uh, some detail of, of how the genetic algorithm is computed. Okay, so uh, yeah, this, this paper was done uh, a bit early. Um, it was okay, 2012. At that time, uh, we tried the, the, this set of proteins, uh, PDB entries. This is number of chains. This is a topology. As you can see that the uh, methods can handle uh, different topologies here. Uh, two AZE um, have three chains, and all pair all pair pair of the chains are, are interacting to each other. Um, on the other, uh, on the other hand, there are some some uh, entries which have like a linear combination. Here, chain G and P are not interacting, but we can, the method can handle uh, the complexes with, in principle, any topology. And uh, for for the previous data set, this is. This is uh, the results uh, we, we presented in a paper. Um, this is PDB ID. Um, okay, so this is our MSD value of the entire model, entire full chain model. 
And okay, this is some details, uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, um, the multi lizard can work up to five to six six chains. Well, in principle, the algorithm should should work for a larger, more more number of chains. But uh, because of the the, uh, the number in you know, the uh, conformational space, a much larger conformational space. Um, well, in practice, we didn't see a very good results when when we uh, tried to, to run you know uh, more number of chains. And I think that's okay. Um, this is our last slide from me. Um, so uh, uh, in multi lizard. Um, sometimes that the overall uh, structures may not be uh, may not have a, a good RMSD value, but what it is shown here is okay for this A B C D. Okay, A is from from uh, from one A zero three chain complex. This is B is four chain complex. Uh, C is four chain. D is six chain complex, and overall RMSD is not does not look great. 23, 23 Ongstrom, 18, or 25, or 21. But actually, uh, even in the case that overall uh, the complex is not close to the, to the correct answer, if you look at the, the uh, subcomplexes, in this case, in one A0, two of them are within four Ongstrom. Actually, the chains in color are uh, within RMSD of four Ongstrom. For this four chain complex, the out, uh, out of four, three are within four, four Ongstrom. In this case, this is six chain complex. And actually, uh, the reason why it has an overall 25 Ongstrom RMSD is because one of the, one of the chain, actually, I, I think this chain in gray is, is docked in a, in, a, in a different place. But if you only look at the five chain out of six, they are within four Ongstrom. So uh, multi lizard often have um, often have uh, sub complexes correct even if the the uh, overall chains uh, overall complexes does not have small RMSD values. And then yeah, that's it from me. Um, any questions? Is that okay? So I have so, a question. Sure. Yes. Uh, so, uh, how how this uh, software is valid? Uh, like, you know, when I apply for uh, complexes which are ha happening inside the membrane, in the oh. membrane. So, if I say start modeling the single trans uh, membranes or single transverse proteins, and see how the complexes are formed between them, and in the lipid environment, and lipid also plays an I mean, plays a very important role in the complex formation. So what are the limitations if I were to use this? Okay, yeah, that's a very great question. Um, so, uh, okay, actually we are, we are uh, working on membrane, membrane version of pairwise docking methods um, by one of our lab members. Um, so uh, currently this pairwise docking and multi-chain multi docking do not consider, uh, do not consider membrane environment. Um, so uh, uh, if if the two if the two proteins you want to dock uh, have very good shape complementarity, then this method may be able to 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 dock in the right conformation, docking docking conformation. But if uh, but since this does not consider membrane um, at all, uh, I well probably the method doesn't work very well. So the in the in, uh, actually we, we are really in the development of membrane version of protein this uh, lizard methods. Um, so the, we are basically considering two things. One is to, to limit the the, the uh, conformational space within the membrane, obviously, um, and so that you know two 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 membrane proteins do not dock dock um, dock outside of the membrane like like this. Um, that's one thing, and another thing is that we also try to consider the interaction between protein and lipids, because uh, in membrane, pro membrane hydrophobic amino acid can expose outside, but in uh, soluble protein, that's very rare. So uh, yeah, short answer is uh, this method is not at this point suitable for a membrane protein, but uh, maybe you could try, but uh, well, uh, well, but since, since we have a, a, a prototype version, um, if you could, 
Well, uh, well, contact us again. We could try to talk and see uh, how it works. Okay, thank you. Hi, Dr. Kiara, I had a quick question. Sure. I, I guess this is also like a future direction question, but I was wondering if um, uh, we can do something about conformational changes upon binding or docking. Um, okay. For example, um, I recently uh, in my own project have a, like a protein-protein interaction where one of the domains of the main protein moves uh, out of the way in order to accommodate the second protein to bind. Sure. So, yeah, that's a very great question. Um, that's a very great question. Uh, maybe uh, Charles can talk a lot about that. He, that's his project. <laughs> so, so, um, so we can, for, for this, this method, this lizard and mem lizard cannot consider a large scale conformational change. Uh, since actually the lizard is, is uh, using us uh, like, kind of soft representation of the surface, it can handle small deviation of small conformational change of RMST of up to two angstrom or three angstrom. Well, it does not make that uh, the, uh, you know, uh, the uh, alternative different conformation, but uh, uh, the lizard can, can dock unbound docking, confor unbound conformation, uh, well, correctly, uh, if the conformational change is within about two, three Armstrong. Uh, but if the, if, the, if the conformational change is large, like opening and closing, or, or some large loop motions, then this, this method cannot handle those. Um, so uh, what Charles, maybe Charles can, can talk, talk more, uh, uh, more later, but uh, what Charles method does is, is um, if you can identify uh, rigid regions in the uh, ligand protein you want to dock, a, a method by Charles will dock individual solid part first individually to the to the to the receptor protein, and then try to 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 uh, you know uh, make a big conformational change of the ligands, uh, so that the the in, uh, uh, rigid domains will fit. Uh, will will overlap well with 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 um, with 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 uh, the uh, with the ligand conformation, so um, that that allows huge motion conformational change. Um, but uh, Charles is trying to to finish that project. Um, if your methods another another thing is if your um, protein is completely disordered, uh, we have such methods. Uh, but uh, we, we, so we are trying to, to implement it on the website, uh, but uh, we don't have the currently we don't have have them on the on the uh, website yet. But okay, let me show you. Um, if you are, okay, for example, okay, if you, are, if you want to dock rigid protein against disordered protein, well here disorder for disorder protein is really disordered, so you don't have a conformation, but if you want to dock a uh, rigid protein against the, the, the sequence of uh, uh, disorder protein, we have a method to dock. So the way this works is, um, okay, so uh, you have a, a rigid receptor protein and disordered sequence of disordered protein. For that, we cut the, the sequence into pieces of nine residue long uh, fragments, and then uh, make a uh, structure prediction of each of these uh, fragments and then dock individually and then at the end, at the end we, we connect them together. So this is called uh, intrinsic, intrinsic disordered region lizard, IDP, okay, or actually maybe I, we named it ID protein, IDP lizard. That is available only as a, as a uh, standalone program. So, uh, uh, so, we, so today, uh, Charles will, will talk more, uh, mostly about this web server, how to use the web server. 
But we also have this website where you can download the programs and then IDP lizard is, is here if, uh, if, uh, yeah, uh, if you wanted to run it locally. Um, but I, yeah, but web server is only at this point for basically rigid rigid docking. Awesome, thank you so much, Dr. Kiara. Okay, okay then I stop sharing then. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about how you can actually use Lizard. Um, okay, so I've put the URL for this into the Zoom chat. Uh, so if you, if you want to follow along uh, on your own uh, laptop, you can. So basically from this landing page, uh, I'm just gonna click uh, learn more. Uh, so basically when you first get to the Lizard website, there's quite a lot of information on how to use, uh, how to interpret and so on, and just general introduction, a lot of which was uh, covered by uh, Professor Kihara's uh, presentation. Um, so I'm gonna jump straight into how you can actually uh, use uh, step by step uh, this web server. So uh, the first thing we recommend is that you actually register uh, more or less just so that you can actually keep track of your lizard jobs uh, because it's very unusual for someone who's actually carrying out some kind of computational investigation to only run uh, one docking run. Uh, so I've already registered so I'm not going to fill, fill this page in. Uh, but basically when you fill this in, uh, you'll be emailed uh, an email verification link just to make sure that people aren't signing up with strange emails. Uh, and then once that's, uh, once you've uh, enabled that, you can just click login. Uh, and so I'm gonna go ahead and log into here. Uh, and so now I've logged into the Lizard web server. Um, I'm gonna just go through a little brief tour of the general interface before I actually submit any jobs. Uh, so anyone who wants to make their own account can catch up. So basically, uh, once you log in, uh, you have this page. Uh, if you click your account name up here, uh, you can get this page where normally uh, all the jobs you've submitted will be listed. Uh, so right now here, uh, because this is a brand new account that I've made, there are no jobs listed. If I instead uh, log in on a different account, uh, because I have lots of alternate accounts here, and I click here, I have lots of example jobs. But I'm gonna start with the blank one, uh, just so that what you guys see in your own, uh, your own practice matches uh, what I'm doing. So then now uh, you've got these two big buttons here. So the find existing job page is basically what we saw before. There's also a button to create a new job, which is identical to this submit button up here. So I'm gonna click this. So basically this page uh, lets you specify everything that you need to do basically anything with Lizard. Uh, so you have uh, these boxes up here which allow you to upload your input proteins. Uh, remember, uh, Lizard uh, runs on two subunits at a time. Uh, after this uh, pairwise Lizard demonstration, I'll move on to multi-Lizard. Uh, below this, uh, we have this clustering cutoff. So to avoid redundancy in uh, structure modeling, just like, just like if you were uh, doing some kind of sequence alignment, or you want to have some representative set of sequences, uh, you'll often cluster at say like 90 or some other uh, percent sequence identity. Um, so just like that, here we cluster structures with a four angstrom RMSD cutoff. There's also a surface reduction cutoff. So just like uh, Professor Kihara showed, uh, there is a surface representation of each protein that Lizard uses. And basically how finely detailed 
we allow that representation to be uh, affects both the computational time required uh, and also uh, the accuracy of the docking. Uh, but generally, we leave this at 10 to the minus 4. Uh, if you wanted to uh, test uh, different, I guess, resolutions of docking, you can play with this. But generally, I would recommend leaving this where it is. Uh, we see uh, the job email here. This has been automatically filled in uh, from when I created my account. So uh, basically, if you don't create an account, uh, currently you can just specify an email. However, if you create an account, your email will be automatically filled in. There is a checkbox for whether or not you want to receive an email uh, when your job starts. And then there's a job title and job comment where you can just uh, annotate your job however you want. And this job title will show up in the table of submitted jobs. So are there any questions so far? After this, I'm gonna talk about how to specify constraints on docking. All right. So I'm gonna click this button at the very top of the page to load an example. Uh, if, you're, if you're looking at this web page on your own, uh, in your own browser, you can click this as well and basically do exactly the same thing I'm doing. So basically uh, what I've done here, this example loads in a uh, particular uh, Ubiquitin, uh, and Ubiquitin ligase complex. Um, mostly what matters is, is that this is a small complex, which means that the docking will be very fast. And so we can we can look at the uh, the protein structure just to visually inspect it before actually committing the resources to this job. Uh, we've automatically this this job example has set uh, the surface reduction to ten to the minus two, uh, which is fine. It just means it's a bit coarse grained. The clustering cutoff is left to the default. I'm going to rename this to uh, workshop one and add a job comment. And then down here, we see that something has been added in this uh, constraints, constra uh, constraints section. So the Lizard web server allows you to not just do a full ab initio Lizard docking, it allows you to incorporate information that you know about uh, how the residues are interacting. And so the way that it does this uh, is through the specification of distance restraints. And so there are two general types of restraints that the web server uh, accepts. Uh, the first kind is just binding site restraint, which is basically what's been automatically filled in here. So what we're saying is that in this restraint is that residue uh, 44 in chain B of the receptor protein uh, should be uh, within 10 angstroms in any lizard output model uh, of the ligand which is basically just saying in a very loose sense that residue 44 is forced to be part of the binding site. So if you've done some, say, mutation study, and you're expecting that some particular residue should be at the interface, you can specify this kind of restraint to narrow down the search a lot. There is also a corresponding uh, constraint type for doing it from the ligand side. Uh, it's exactly the same thing, except it's for the ligand instead of the receptor protein. Uh, and when I say receptor and ligand here, uh, this really just means the first protein and the second protein. By convention, ligand is the smaller one, uh, but it does not uh, mean in this case, I, I know in some, uh, some of you, in some of your work, ligand may refer to small molecules. Uh, so lizard is designed for proteins, uh, not small molecules. You can run lizard uh, with, say, prosthetic groups or modified residues, things like that attached. Um, however, the scoring functions will not be able to account for the, uh, the strange residue or prosthetic group or, or metal or something like that. Uh, however, lizard will still be able to model the steric effects that that might have on some interaction. Uh, but in general, uh, it's mainly intended for uh, purely protein protein interaction. So we've talked about the receptor and ligand binding site restraints. I'm going to click uh, this remove entry button to clear out that uh, empty ligand binding site restraint that I specified. And now I'm going to talk about uh, residue residue uh, constraints. So if, you, if you've done like a, a 
a very detailed mutation study, uh, you might not just have one side of the interaction that you're confident about. Maybe you have both sides. And so in that case, you might say that a particular residue on the receptor uh, is going to be forced to interact in the docking and the dock models with some uh, other residue on the ligand side. And so I could, for example, specify uh, B44 on the residue, just like before, or, sorry, on the receptor, just like before, uh, and maybe C23 on the ligand residue. And if I, I think there, maybe there's some uh, pi pi stacking that somehow I really know is happening there, I'm going to specify that these residues should be within five angstroms, a very strict cutoff of each other. So I should note here that the d uh, definition of distance is basically just the closest pair of heavy atoms between the two residues. So it's not just uh, backbone, uh, it includes side chains, but it does not count hydrogens. Uh, in general, actually, so uh, lizard, um, hydrogens aren't going to be modeled. Uh, so if you want, if, if you need that fine level of detail, you should generate your models with lizard and then model the hydrogens afterward using some other software. Um, and then it's a little more complicated for multi-lizard, uh, which I'll talk about after this. And finally, up here, there are these uh, fraction and count for overall restraints. Basically, uh, these give you a method to specify kind of soft uh, constraints or Boolean like conditional functions on restraints. So for example, if you want to say that either one or the other uh, residue is part of a binding site, uh, you can do that using this count and fraction uh, function up top. And finally, uh, if you if you want to specify some uh, really complicated spaghetti mess of constraints that is hard to or impossible to specify using the graphical controls, uh, you can upload uh, your own custom JSON. And so the format for this is that's going to look something like this. Uh, but generally, if you want to do something like this, I would recommend contacting us uh, because if, if you're doing that kind of very detailed modeling, it's going to get very tricky very quickly. So before I actually go through and run this example, uh, are there any questions? Yeah, can you explain the fraction and count again? I don't know what I'm uh, so, Okay, so basically, um, suppose you have specified three residue residue constraints. Um, and say maybe there's uh, some particular uh, cysteine, cysteine, uh, cysteine pair of cysteines between the proteins are going to be very close, uh, or some other pair, or some other pair. If you specify, let's say if I switch to count, if you specify um, the minimum count as one, then that means that any one of these restraints can be satisfied and the model will be accepted. So it, it's a way of specifying and or 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 say like 80% of this group of constraints should be satisfied, and that sort of thing. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. If there are no other questions, then I'm going to go ahead and submit this. So I'm just going to quickly reload this page. And then I'm going to click Submit. And this is successful. So actually, so uh, the Lizard web server has a cache of uh, pre-docked models. So basically, if you submit models that someone has already docked before, uh, your job will basically finish immediately. Uh, so just now, I got a your request to Lizard is processed email immediately from the web server. That's not right. There we go. Uh, so I've loaded in this job. Uh, if you want, uh, you can uh, you can either do the same procedure I just did uh, by submitting the example job, or uh, if you don't want to do that for whatever reason, you can follow this link that I've just put in the Zoom chat. Uh, and so we'll get to this page where you can view lizard results. And so on this page, uh, we have this uh, kind of summary visualization of the docking run. So if we recall, 
this, uh, this docking run had one uh, receptor binding site restraint specifying that a particular residue, residue 44, should be within 10 angstroms uh, of the ligand. And so in this representation, you have uh, in red the receptor protein is shown, and then these orange dots each represent the centroid of some uh, docked ligand position. So if I mouse over this, it says that uh, model 37 uh, is centered at this location. And if I click that, uh, we can see that particular model. Uh, and we can, say, cycle through some, some visualizations, depending on uh, what you're actually uh, You can PDB files in whatever program you want for further uh, visualization or analysis or simulation or what have you. Uh, by clicking uh, any of these download links. So it looks like uh, the file prompt doesn't, uh, because it's a modal window, doesn't show up on Zoom. Uh, but if you click this download top 10 or top 50 or 500 or all, uh, you'll get a, a compressed archive uh, containing that many decoys. So if I click this uh, download all, uh, this is a very small protein, so actually, uh, the all file is less than 100 megabytes. Uh, but anyway, you, so you can download uh, files uh, from the Lizard web server uh, and process them however you want. You're not restricted uh, to this visualizer. And so, okay. So now uh, if we scroll down, uh, we see uh, this table. Uh, so just like, uh, in uh, Professor Kihara's presentation, uh, each uh, model is scored according to the rank sum, uh, rank aggregation scoring scheme. And basically, the models are already ordered by this. So model one is always number one by rank sum. Model two is number one by rank sum, and so on. Uh, but basically, you can also open models individually, like so, or download uh, models individually using the download column of the table. So are there any uh, questions at this point? So when you're looking uh, at the scoring, are you looking solely at the rank sum score? Uh, so, okay, so in, all right, so in this table, um, there is the rank sum score column, which is the way everything is ordered. However, if you want to see uh, some other ordering, uh, you can sort by any of the component scores. So there are three uh, statistical potentials that are used uh, as that, that, that rank sum aggregates into a, a, a superior score, uh, so we claim. Which do you feel is best or most reliable? Uh, rank sum is usually what I would say is the most reliable. Um, if, right, so if, if you have, for example, uh, hmm, like a membrane protein or other things like that. Uh, I can't really speak to that, but in general, if you just have two globular domains that are interacting, I, I would generally use rank sum. Are there any other questions? Um, Charles, I have a question. Um, yep. So oh, when you mentioned that we can place uh, one or more residues as a restraint. Um, if I put two or more, for example, will it be limiting my the amount of results I can get from a protein docking, or does that so, just come out as separate? Okay, so that's a very good question. So in general, um, if you uh, if you specify, say, a hundred. Uh, pairwise residue residue constraints. So you're saying like all these specific interactions should exactly be happening. Um, probably that's not gonna work very well. You will probably over constrain your solution. Uh, and so basically you might end up with a very, very small or even a empty set of lizard decoys. So for example, if you say, the maybe a simple example is you have some large protein uh, and you say that on one side, uh, there's a binding site, and then 100 angstroms away is also should be the same binding site. Uh, and maybe the you, you just have like ubiquitin, that's the other partner in this interaction. 
ubiquitin is not 100 angstroms long. So this constraint is always going to be impossible to, or both of those constraints are going to be impossible to satisfy simultaneously. So, in, so I think that that extreme uh, example highlights that you should be kind of parsimonious with your restraints, or uh, use this uh, overall restraints or overall restraint count or fraction uh, to basically soften uh, the effect of having large numbers of possibly contradictory constraints. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? All right. And so then uh, one last thing uh, is that if you really like to look at very large tables of numbers, uh, you can click through at the bottom of the page here uh, to browse through all the way uh, this this cuts it off at 500. Uh, I think this uh, this particular docking run has about 7,000 output models. Um, but anyway, so basically any any of the output models you can inspect using whatever software you want just by downloading them. So now I'm going to move on to multi lizard. So to go submit something with Multilizard, uh, on the main job submission page, there's this giant button that says dock multiple proteins with Multilizard. So I'm going to click that, uh, and we're going to switch into Multilizard mode. And so Multilizard mode uh, is a bit different from, uh, from the pairwise lizard mode. So in Multilizard, uh, you can add uh, like uh, Professor Kara said, here we allow up to six proteins. Uh, if uh, you want to simultaneously dock um, more than six proteins, uh, probably, first of all, you should specify lots of constraints, because otherwise the search space there is massive. Um, but anyway, we don't let you do that using the web server simply because of resource constraints. So if you want to use multi-lizard with more than six chains, then you can download Multilizard uh, from the lab's main, the main lab website. Uh, but anyway, in terms of using Multilizard from the web server, I'm going to remove uh, those extraneous proteins. So you'll see that, like before, we have the clustering cutoff that you can specify. Uh, you'll notice that here, uh, it's 10 angstroms. Uh, so with Multilizard, the standard is to use a much larger clustering cutoff simply because if you leave the clustering cutoff at four angstroms, the search space for uh, doing the genetic algorithm is simply too large, uh, and you basically have no hope of uh, the, the genetic algorithm converging. Uh, so we make uh, each pairwise decoy set super non-redundant by specifying typically a larger clustering cutoff. And here we have the surface reduction cutoff just like before. And now for some new parameters, um, the first one is population size. So the population size basically corresponds to the number of output models. Um, so the default is 200. Uh, we let you specify up to 400. If you want to go larger than this, uh, just like uh, with the number of chains, uh, this has some resource problems. Uh, so we, su we would suggest uh, downloading it uh, and running it directly. And then uh, the other new parameter is the number of generations. Uh, we default this to 3,000 because that's heuristically how long uh, it takes for most of the population to converge. Uh, however, uh, we let you uh, crank it up as high as 5,000. Uh, and if you want a really quick run, you can specify something as low as 1,000. And so then there's this checkbox here for crossover. Uh, probably uh, nobody here would find this useful, um, but if if you know that uh, your your population of models is going to fit into a very narrow classification, and you think that by mixing and matching pieces in a particular way that you're going to get better output models, um, then maybe you can use this. Um, but if you want to do that kind of complicated modeling with multi lizard, maybe instead talk to us.
And so then just like before, there's uh, the job email where your results will be returned to, uh, whether or not you want to receive an email when your job starts running, uh, job title and job comment. Speaking of the job title, uh, I neglected to go back and show you the table. Uh, but basically, uh, once I submitted a job under this account, the table became populated. And you can see here that there is a job named example uh, submitted today uh, at the time where I submitted it. Uh, and if we click the check status button, it goes to what I showed before. And so basically, uh, just like with Pairwise Lizard, there is an example button. Uh, this, this example is uh, a tetramer from a parasite that causes malaria. Um, it is also a smallish example. But basically uh, here, uh, I use this to highlight uh, how you can apply constraints to narrow the search space that multi-lizard has to search. So just like with pairwise lizard, uh, you can specify a binding site and uh, residue residue pairwise constraints. Uh, however, uh, because there are multiple protein chains, uh, we say receptor and ligand, but really uh, here you have to specify what you mean by that because there's more than two. Uh, so here I've specified uh, three uh, residue residue constraints. And so basically uh, this, this is a uh, protein with A2, B2 stoichiometry. And so I'm saying that this, these particular residues on chains A and C should be interacting, likewise between B and D. And then also um, between these, uh, these two proteins, uh, C and D, which are the same, uh, the same sequence rather, uh, that these particular uh, isoleucines should be uh, interacting. And so note that uh, here it says A, B, C, D in the ligand residue uh, box. However, there is a new checkbox, or not checkbox, a new uh, selector uh, by each restraint. Uh, and so basically, you have to specify uh, which, uh, just numerically, so here we have one, two, three, and four. So basically just the order the proteins were uploaded in. And so the reason that there's this uh, issue of like say subunit number uh, versus uh, chain is, uh, because first of all, uh, you can have arbitrary chain IDs. This could be Z, for example, uh, or you can also specify subunits that have multiple chains. So both, both of these uh, scenarios are allowed uh, and the web server accounts for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just submit this. So unlike with pairwise lizard, uh, the uh, multi-lizard can't take advantage of the caching very well to speed up uh, the return of jobs where uh, where they already run uh, this this uh, protein complex before, because the genetic algorithm stage of multi-lizard is a stochastic process, and so it, the point of it is kind of destroyed if the results are cached. However, uh, for our inspection, I have prepared this example, which uh, I've put in the Zoom chat, and you can open this URL to follow along. Basically, the results page for multi-lizard uh, looks very similar to the results page for, uh, page for a pairwise lizard. And you can see here, uh, this is run with some constraint. Uh, it's slightly different from the one that I just used. However, we can see here that there are these centroids just like before. However, there are several colors. This is because there are more than two subunits. So for example, if we mouse over uh, this cyan uh, sphere over here. This is corresponding to model 49, uh, subunit C, uh, or subunit number three, if you want. And so if we click this, we can see that all the subunits will load in. And so this is the case for all the various uh, model centroids. And so down here, uh, we have this, again, table of rank sum results. In general, I would recommend still using rank sum score. However, uh, if you are using multi-lizard uh, with uh, not very many constraints, 
I would recommend uh, looking through the models individually, uh, simply because as uh, Professor Kihara discussed, uh, it's very common for multi-lizard to, uh, exact, uh, to, very, to do very well in modeling subcomplexes, but then to have some other complex, or some, sorry, some other subunit uh, in an incorrect position, uh, making the model say, for, in, for example, in terms of energy or in terms of RMSD look not great. However, if you look at the individual subunits uh, and their interactions, it's almost exactly correct. And so just like with Pairwise Lizard, uh, you can click the buttons at the top to download uh, various sizes of model set. Uh, and that, I think, more or less covers uh, everything about using uh, Lizard and Multi-Lizard. Are there any questions? Does anyone have any questions? You can post in the chat as well. I have a question. Uh, so uh, for the docking, uh, constraint data is uh, necessary, or if we do not have constraint data, so can we dock uh, two or multi-protein protein by using this multi uh, Yes. Yeah. So for it, it, it's the case for both pairwise lizard and multi lizard that you can run it and get valid results with no constraints whatsoever. Um, however, we generally recommend making use of all the knowledge you have um, you know, when you're trying to model a protein. Um, but in general, so lizard, um, you can usually get away with not specifying constraints uh, unless you've had to. Uh, obtain your model through some means other than experimental uh, determination. So for example, if you've modeled some, if you've modeled one of the subunits using a homology modeling from a not very high sequence identity template, or if you've used something like uh, uh, our protein structure, uh, single chain prediction method or ITASER or TR Rosetta or any of those things, uh, in that case, you, you probably want to find some constraint because uh, if there are any significant errors in modeling of one of the subunits, that can throw off the docking. Uh, in the case of multi-lizard, I, I would recommend using constraints uh, wherever possible, simply because if you uh, basically, if, if you know the topology of the interaction, you can, uh, by, by specifying constraints, you can avoid this issue where most of the complex is correct and then one subunit goes to some strange place. Thank you. Okay, so this multi laser dock uh, like chain uh, protein one, two, three, four dock with each other, or we can also dock like we have one protein and we have like uh, uh, we want to dock with uh, other receptors like we have like more receptors than one, two, three, and we have two or three receptors. And uh, we okay, I think I, I think I see what you're saying. So you're asking if basically we can uh, use this as some kind of uh, screening. So if I want to have say yes. ubiquitin and we want to study how it interacts with like 20 other proteins. Yes. Uh, so if you want to do that kind of thing, um, uh, you would not use multi-lizard for that. You would use pairwise lizard. Uh, and you would do that basically by submitting 20 different docs. Um, okay, okay. Or if you want to do that kind of large uh, screening, I would recommend uh, running it on your own, simply because if you submit 20 jobs here versus if you have your own supercomputer time, you're probably going to have a faster turnaround. Uh, however, for general use, the web server will give you results pretty quickly. 